Hi again from the garden. So this week in Northwest Iowa, we happen to be having some really unseasonably warm weather. It has been in the mid 60s the last few days. So I've been out in the garden taking advantage of that weather and just been doing a few projects. And as you can see, I am inside my greenhouse right now. I've been replacing a few of the panels in my greenhouse. Um, quite a few of them actually blew out during a windstorm. And so I ordered some new panels that are stronger than the ones that came with this and I have replaced those and caulked them in with a waterproof sealant. So I should be good to go hopefully for the season on that. And then today I'm actually gonna be in here in the greenhouse doing some seed starting, which is gonna be super fun um, because up until now I've just been doing it all indoors. And so I thought in this week's video, I would share with you guys what seeds I am starting this week, which today is March 2nd. And then before I do that, I thought it would be fun to just do a walk around the garden as kind of a follow up to to my 2022 garden plan video and I would show you guys what is going where. So let's go ahead and do a walk around the garden. So my greenhouse is located right in the middle of my garden. Um, there is bed space all around the greenhouse and then it extends all the way to the end of the garden. And this year around the greenhouse on the two um, sides and then the back, I'm planting once again snapdragons. And then in the planting space in front of the greenhouse, I plan to fill this with Rebecca. Now in all of my planting areas this year in the garden, I plan to put landscape fabric down and then burn holes in the landscape fabric. So I should have a lot less problem with weeds this year. Um, now snapdragons this year, I'm also gonna try planting six inches apart instead of nine inches apart. Last year I planted them nine inches apart and I thought they could just be a little bit closer. Since then I have seen other flower farmers plant theirs at six inches and so I'm gonna give that a try this year. So I think first I'm gonna take you on back and show you what is going in this whole middle bed space and then we'll walk around the perimeter of the garden. So as we walk back behind the greenhouse, you can see that this bed extends all the way to the end of the garden. Now you can see those white markers in front. Those are some tulips that I have planted. Um, that trellis will be moving. That is what I grew my squash on last year. Um, so pretty much where that trellis is, I'm gonna have four rows of zinnias. And then beyond that, at the very end of this bed will be two rows of dahlias. And so this space is going to really pack in a lot of plants this year. So then from here, as we turn to the north, this is a six by 22 bed that is located right next to my building, which is my photography studio. This is where some of my ranunculus are gonna get planted for the spring. But once those are done, this area will be filled with my succession plantings of sunflowers. Now the front of this bed, you can see this wood right here. I need to reinforce that either with um, some new wood or railroad ties or landscape blocks. Um, in my garden plan video, I had a few of you concerned about the railroad ties. I do not plant anything in this spot um, that is edible, um, but I may go ahead and just do landscape block. Um, we'll see in a month or so how that goes. But once this is reinforced, it will have ranunculus and then succession plantings of sunflowers. Here you can see the rest of the area along the side of my building. This front area here, that is going to be all status. And then these two four by four beds that are in here, those are coming out and those are actually going on the outside of my fenced in garden area next to my pumpkin patch, um, probably for some succession plantings later in the season. But this entire bed space is going to be filled with status, ageratum and feverfew. And then if we walk down towards the end, you can see I have a little patch here right in front of my air conditioner. That's about three by three in size. I'm gonna plant some yarrow in that spot. I have another area for yarrow, which I'll show you in a little bit. And then this bed, this large bed, which is right next to the post of my pergola, this is going to be a home for dahlias this year. And in this area, I should be able to fit about 40 dahlia plants. Now across the path, which I apologize, this is part sun and shade, so it's a little bit hard to see. Um, this raised bed right here, this is going away. Um, that is actually the gate where you come into the garden in one of the areas. This bed is where my dahlias were last year. This year it is going to be planted with celosia and my first succession planting of basil. 
and you can see my pergola area here. I'm so excited to use that this year. That was a new addition to the garden last year. And then as we rotate to the south, here you can see the other pathway through my garden along with my other long bed. Now this is next to the building that is next to my garden. So it does get shade part of the day, especially um, in the winter, which is right now. But during the summer, it does get a full six to eight hours of sun. So I am able to utilize it. So you can see over here, I have a few hydrangea bushes planted. There is a narrow planting area um, that goes all the way down here right in front of my hydrangea bushes. That's where my lisianthus is going again. And then if we walk down a little further, it's hard to see right now, but throughout this area, I have quite a bit of perennial is still be planted. There is also some perennial yarrow also planted, but this whole area I am going to completely fill with new yarrow plants. And then in front of this old door, which I use for photo sessions, from there on down is going to be planted with cress and bupleurum and stock. So I'm going to have a really good variety of plants in this area. So this whole fenced in area is about 30 by 50 in size. And some of you that are new to my channel may be wondering why is there traffic behind me? So this is technically an urban garden because it is right next door to my photography studio. So that is Main Street behind me. But this is the main area where I plant most of my cut flowers. I also have a cottage garden area on the other side of the fence where I'm going to be plugging in a lot of the seeds that I start also. Mostly some random varieties that I do um, smaller batches of such as as, um, some amaranth marigolds I'll be putting more rubecchia out there that planting area also has more perennial rubecchia daisies and echinacea that I use for cutting and then on the outside of my fence next to my parking lot is my no dig bed where I plant all of my pumpkins this year I'm really amping up my pumpkin hills I'm hoping to have at least 20 because the end of season market that I do in September, which is a huge vendor market, um, last year I sold out of everything in under three hours. This year, besides having a lot more flowers, I'm gonna be taking small and medium specialty pumpkins. So when I do all of those plantings, I will make sure to do a video on that because I have about 15 to 20 varieties and some of them are really cool looking. Okay, so let's go inside the greenhouse and get all of those seeds started. Okay, so I have quite a few seeds that I am starting today. Again, today is March 2nd. And so some of these varieties of seeds are ones that are called cool flowers that you can actually plant out before your last frost. And so that is why I'm starting some of these a little bit earlier. I am starting Feverfew today, Ageratum, I'm starting a couple kinds of larkspur, which you can definitely plant out earlier. Now, I'm not doing very many larkspur seeds. These are just kind of a backup because I did my winter sowing of larkspur a while ago. Um, I have one, two, three. I have five kinds of asters that I'm starting, and then I have four kinds of yarrow that I am starting. And then a majority of the rest of the seeds are going to be started in a couple weeks, mid-March, and then around April 1st. So I have a lot more seeds to go, but um, it's fun to get some of these earlier ones sown. So basically what I need for my seed starting is a pre-moistened seed starting mix, which I already have this pre-moistened. I use a burpee seed starting mix. I found that I like this one the best because it contains coconut core and it really holds that moisture well. Um, I have my potting tray that basically just keeps the soil contained. And then I'm gonna be using two sizes of seed trays today. I'm gonna to use these 24 cell growies seed starting trays from Gardener Supply. These are supposed to be self watering. They have a wicking mat that comes with them. So once I see germination, I'll be using that. And then I'm also going to use a couple of the standard 72 cell trays. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these filled with soil, get everything planted, and then I will show you how much I planted of each variety.
Okay, all of my seeds are sown. I did one 24 cell tray of feverfew. I did one 24 tray of ageratum. I did another 24 tray that was half ageratum, half larkspur. And then I did a 72 cell tray of asters of five different kinds. And then I did another 72 cell tray that was four kinds of perennial yarrow. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go put these under my grow lights on my heat mats. Once I see almost total germination in the trays, I'll take the humidity domes off and turn the heat mats off. And then these will live under my grow lights till I start hardening them off outside and then they get planted out. So I'm really excited about all of these varieties I'm starting this year. I grew a little bit of yarrow and asters last year, but not near this varieties. Um, and then Larkspur, Adgeratum, and Feverfew, I have never grown before. So I am really excited to see how those grow. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what seeds I'm starting in early March. And then also I hope you enjoyed seeing a walk around the garden. Um, it's kind of a continuation to my 2022 grow plan to see what was going where. So I will link that video down below along with the video that shows everything that I am growing this season, all the varieties, because I put pictures up on the screen. So, um, you know, like the asters, I have started five varieties. In that video, you can see which five I'm starting. So that's always kind of fun to watch too. So anyway, stay tuned for a lot more seeds starting. I'm going to be giving you updates on my seedlings. And then um, before I know it, I'll be planting everything out in the garden. So anyway, stay tuned. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.